So turning to video two, naltrexone, potential indications and administration in children and adolescents. Opiate antagonists don't readily cross the blood-brain barrier, but they are potent competitive inhibitors with an affinity for mu receptors, which are found in very high concentration in bronchial smooth muscle and the digestive tract. So endogenous opioid peptides, such as endorphins and enkephalins, are present naturally in the brain and are released during times of physical pain or stress. Opiate antagonists block these effects, and this blockade is the mechanism through which their psychiatric effects are derived. Opiate antagonists have been observed to reverse hyperphagia and obesity, decrease social aggression, and attenuate drug or stress-induced stereotypy associated with elevated endogenous opiate levels. Now, in terms of mechanism of action for naltrexone, naltrexone is a potent opioid antagonist with a high affinity for mu opioid binding sites, which completely and reversibly blocks the effects of endogenous and exogenous opiate derivatives. And there is more and more evidence regarding the efficacy and side effect profile of naltrexone for psychiatric conditions. But again, this is mainly derived from adult studies of substance use and there's considerable variability in response rates. Indeed, there aren't any currently FDA-approved pediatric indications for naltrexone. That being said, off-label use regularly occurs in conditions associated with the opioid reward pathway, such as self-injurious behaviors, eating disorders, hyperactivity and restlessness in autism spectrum disorders, and alcohol abuse disorders. Potential indications, self-injurious behaviors. This is an area of high attention because elevated levels of endogenous opioids and decreased pain perception are hypothesized to contribute to the etiology or cause of many self-injurious behaviors. So naltrexone may actually be helpful for reestablishing pain perception and decreasing self-injurious behaviors in individual patients. That being said, again, there's little evidence of long-term efficacy or information on possible long-term side effects in children. Self-injurious behaviors also persist for many years, and it's unknown whether a tolerance to opiate antagonism can develop. Several placebo-controlled studies have reported a reduction of self-injurious behaviors with naltrexone treatment, but many of these studies have been conducted in very small samples and over a very limited time period, and other studies did fail to demonstrate any effect whatsoever. Thus, additional research exploring long-term clinical benefits is critical. The current evidence supporting the use of naltrexone for self-injurious behaviors is limited and conflicting, Therefore, naltrexone should be reserved only for extreme cases of self-injurious behavior refractory to other more usual treatment options. Now, naltrexone also has a potential indication for autism spectrum disorder and symptoms seen in opioid intoxication, such as social withdrawal, stereotypies, and sensory sensitivity led to the hypothesis that there could be abnormalities of the endogenous opioid system playing an etiologic role in autism. As such, naltrexone was considered as a potential treatment for autism. An initial study of naltrexone in autistic children actually found improvements in both autistic, decreased social withdrawal, increased verbal production, reduced stereotype behaviors, and non-autistic, that is, decreases in restlessness and tantrum symptoms. Subsequent randomized controlled trials also found that naltrexone produced significant improvement in non-autistic symptoms, impulsivity, hyperactivity, and irritability, and led to decreases in self-injurious behaviors and improved global assessment scores. 
However, in these same studies, naltrexone failed to improve the core symptoms of autism and had no significant effect on social and stereotypic behaviors. And due to significant heterogeneity of available trials, small sample sizes, evidence to support the use of naltrexone for treating the core symptoms of autism is still lacking. That being said, I find this a very promising area, so please stay tuned. Now, naltrexone potential indications for eating disorders. This is also an increasing area of use and study. Abnormal endorphin levels may underlie the etiology of binge or disordered eating. Naltrexone has been used to treat binge eating and purging in adults. That being said, again, there are few controlled studies that have been conducted and none have been conducted with adolescent participants. In a recent retrospective chart review of adolescent patients receiving low dose, that means 50 milligrams per day of naltrexone, it was well tolerated and was associated with reduced purging or urge to purge. While additional studies are clearly needed, low dose naltrexone appears to be well tolerated and to reduce symptoms and urges of binge eating and purging with no serious side effects. Potential indications for alcohol abuse disorder. The use of naltrexone for alcohol dependence is well established among adult patients. Data on safety and effectiveness with adolescents, though, are quite limited. There are results of a small open-label trial suggesting that naltrexone is well-tolerated in adolescents seeking treatment and appears to support efficacy in adolescents. That being said, additional research is needed before naltrexone can be recommended in pediatric populations routinely. It is being used, but the recommendation at present is to try other more standard interventions prior to naltrexone, and when it is used, to use a smaller, lower dose. For autism and autism-related self-injurious behaviors, Naltrexone has been studied in children in a dosage range from 0.5 to 2 milligrams per kilogram per day. And for alcohol dependence in adolescents, the studies recommend a daily dose of 50 milligrams per day. Side effects. Mild sedation was the most commonly reported side effect in children, as well as insomnia, fatigue, and nausea. Mild hepatic toxicity has also been reported at high doses, but not at low doses, which still appear to effectively block opioid receptors. Liver function tests should be considered, though, before initiating treatment and periodically during chronic treatment to monitor for this rare but obviously concerning effect. Abuse and dependence of naltrexone has not been described, and there are no reported cases of overdose. So key take-home points here are there are currently no FDA-approved pediatric indications for naltrexone. However, off-label use regularly occurs in conditions associated with abnormalities of the endogenous opioid system, such as self-injurious behaviors, eating disorders, autism spectrum disorders, and alcohol use disorders. Current evidence supporting the use of naltrexone in children and adolescents is limited and conflicting, but low-dose naltrexone appears to effectively block opioid receptors and is well-tolerated with few side effects. Mild hepatic toxicity has been reported at high doses, and liver function tests should be considered before initiation of treatment and periodically during chronic treatment. 